Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug and welcome to AP Chemistry once again. We are uh, heading into Unit 3, Section 8, which is about the types of solutions and how substances react when they're placed into solution. Now, there are two important components in pretty much any solution. There's the solvent and then there's the, the solute. The solvent is the medium into which a solute gets dissolved. So in our last video, we said that most of the time in AP chemistry and in most of chemistry in a, a, a fairly typical laboratory, you're working with water as the solvent most of the time. The solute is whatever substance gets dissolved into the medium. Now most of the time, we think of the solute as being a solid. It doesn't have to be. It can be a gas. It can be uh, other liquids. But most of the time, we think of solids uh, being dissolved into water when we think of a solution. Solute and solvent. Now water is the universal solvent. That means that uh, if you have enough water and you have enough time, water will dissolve just about anything if you have enough of it. Um, we also know that water is the solvent that we use in, at least in, in high school chemistry, the vast majority of the time. That's what we usually dissolve things into, and that's probably the case around the home as well. So as we look at these two solutions, we have two fairly identical flasks, it seems, but we have, there, there is a difference between the two solutions here. These are both copper two sulfate. Can you tell which one is more concentrated? I think you can tell, can't you? Just by looking at this, just by eyeballing this, you can tell that the one on the right is more concentrated. And that's because the color has a deeper blue. Now, because of that, how are the particles that make up the mixture different? Well, hopefully you realize that in the more concentrated solution, the particles of solute are closer to each other. And in the one on the left, what we call the dilute solution, the particles of the solute are farther apart. And so light actually uh, diffuses differently based upon the, the concentration of these. And so from our point of view, as we see this with our eyes, the one that has the higher concentration is going to have the deeper blue color. Now, there are important types of solutions that you need to be aware of. We've already mentioned a couple of these. Dilute. Dilute means a solution that has a relatively low amount of solute in it. So if you look at this with your eye, it's probably going to have a paler color if it is a colored solution. Not all solutions are, are going to have a color, of course, that we can see with our eyes. But dilute a fairly low amount of solute. On the other hand, concentrated solutions have a relatively high amount of solute. And we just talked about how that's going to look from your point of view of your eye. Now, dilute and concentrated are relative terms. This solution here, we would call dilute. But if you were to water this down and have a solution that were even more dilute than this, you might say, well, this solution right here is more concentrated than the other one. It's all relative. And we could say the same thing for this, this other concentrated solution. Perhaps there's another one that's even more concentrated, and this one might be a dilute. It's basically just a continuum as we talk about types of solutions. Now, eventually, if you keep adding solute and keep dissolving the solute into the water, into the solvent, you're eventually going to get to a point where that solvent can't hold any more solute, where it has just had enough, it's not going to dissolve any more solute. And that's called saturated. And a saturated solution is a concentrated solution, but it's a, it's, it's, it is a special type of of concentrated solution. It has dissolved the maximum amount of solute for that temperature. Now usually at higher temperatures more solid can be dissolved into a liquid. Uh, that makes it saturated. If you see a saturated solution, one of the ways that you can tell it's saturated is that probably someone has tried to dissolve more 
than it's supposed to, and it's just not dissolving. It's just sinking down to the bottom of the beaker. And so this is a good sign that we have a saturated solution where the there's a solid that's just sank down to the bottom, and it's just not going to dissolve anymore. Now, there is another type of solution. This is, this is one that may seem a bit paradoxical, but it does exist sometimes. This is called a supersaturated solution, and this is a concentrated solution that has temporarily dissolved more than the maximum amount of solute for that temperature. Now, you might wonder how in the world is that possible? Well, essentially, you have to uh, trick the solution into dissolving more than it's supposed to hold. And the way you do this is by raising the temperature. So normally, at higher temperatures, you can dissolve more solid into water. So you raise the temperature you're using a hot plate or something, and you just keep dissolving and dissolving and dissolving and dissolving this solute into the liquid uh, more than it would normally have at room temperature. Then you cut the heat, and then you slowly allow that temperature to drop. And when it's, when it's back down to room temperature, temporarily it will dissolve more than it's really supposed to. It's, you've basically tricked the solution into holding more than it's supposed to. Now the problem with this is that it is usually very unstable, which means if you just uh, perhaps add a seed crystal to it or jostle it around too much or just let it sit there for too long, it will crystallize out and it will flash crystallize almost instantaneously. And this is what we have here. If you see something like this, this is the uh, a supersaturated solution in the process of flash crystallization. So uh, I have a video about that. Uh, I will link that into uh, the description and I'll post it at the end of this uh, video here as well, uh, where I have prepared a supersaturated solution. You can see how that is done. That, that is actually pretty neat. There are some supersaturated solutions in, in the real world that are quite useful. Uh, like supersaturated sodium acetate. It's used as a chemical heat pack. Um, also fudge, if you've ever eaten, eaten fudge, that's a good example of a supersaturated solution being created. Now, we've talked about molarity already, so I don't want uh, to beat that, that uh, once again, but let's take a look at mole fraction. This is another way of talking about concentration. And X is going to represent the mole fraction. We saw that back in the Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure section, right? Well, x just represents the mole fraction. It's a ratio. It doesn't have any units. So that's kind of nice. Now, the moles of the substance will go in the numerator, and then the total moles, that means the sum of all the moles of all the components in the solution, that, that includes the solvent too, will be in the denominator. So that's how you find the mole fraction of a substance. Let's try an example. Here we're going to calculate the mole fraction of sucrose, C12H22O11, in a solution where we have 10.00 grams of sucrose dissolved into 400.0 grams of water. So we're solving for the mole fraction. We have to find out the moles of both of these items because it's not gram fraction, it's mole fraction. So we have to take the 10 grams of sucrose and convert that to moles. And we're gonna to have to do the same thing for the 400 grams of water too. So 10 grams of sucrose, uh, grams on bottom, one mole on top. If you add up the molar mass using the periodic table, you get something very close to th about 342.3 grams in one mole of sucrose. So when you cancel grams, top and bottom, and divide, you get 0 0.02921 moles of sucrose. So that's the value of, of our moles for sucrose. Let's try uh, converting 400 grams of water to moles. Now you have 400 grams of water, got to have to do the same thing here. So grams on the bottom, one mole on top. It's about 18.02 grams in a mole and that's 22.2 moles of water. So now we can actually solve the problem. We take the moles of sucrose and put that in the numerator, and then in the denominator, it's the total moles. So these two mole values that we got added together. And when you 
add these and then divide the top by the bottom, you should get an answer of about 1.314 times 10 to the negative third. So that's the mole fraction of sucrose in this solution. And notice there are no units. Mole fraction is a ratio, so it is a unitless function. Hope you've learned something about mole fraction and how we describe solutions. If you did, give me a thumbs up. In my next video, we are going to be continuing Unit 3, Section 8, as we talk more about what uh, ionic compounds and, and other compounds as well do when they are dissolved into water. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.